yo 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 welcome back to the channel today we're gonna be looking at amc stock um it's december 1st 2021 today was a big sell-off day uh for amc so what i want to do is i want to look at the grand scheme of things and talk about what this means from a wyckoff perspective um obviously there were a lot of emotions today on social media and before i get into the video i just want to talk about something briefly here um, over the course of the past few months, since I've been doing this YouTube channel, uh, one of the big things that I've noticed is um, a demonization of people who are uh, presenting a, a bearish, potentially bearish outlook for the stock um, from a technical standpoint. And I think that up until this point, like, I mean, for the most part, I've been, I've been, if I feel bearish, if I feel like something is going to happen, like there's going to be somewhat of a sell off or there's distribution occurring. Um, then I'm pretty open about uh, talking about it and saying what I think. But I think that having the community um, up close and personal all the time, right, on Twitter, YouTube, and maybe I pay attention a little bit too closely personally, um, sets you up for this sort of weird situ situation where uh, you, you will maybe psychologically, you'll have you'll subliminally be avoiding sharing certain things that could happen. For example, uh, this trend line here would have probably been a trend line that I would have, I would have referenced before, right? Uh, before we ever got into this situation. But because I knew that, it, that this, touching this trend line would bring us down to $33.20, and maybe we were up here in the 40s whenever I would have noticed it, or even the 50s, it's something that maybe I would have avoided sharing altogether. Now, <laughs> over the course of the past few days, that hasn't really mattered very much because uh, last night when I began to share it as a form of support, uh, <laughs> and then going into today, AMC pretty much crashed right through it. So I didn't really spend that much time above it. Um, but I'm just using that as an example. So I think that, I mean, for me personally, I think that it's going to be important that <clears throat> I'm able to stay focused on what I'm here to do, which is educate people. Um, and I know that a lot of times my content can come off as predictive, um, as if I'm trying to predict what the price action is going to do, because that's kind of the nature of analyzing something for the public. Um, you're going to come to certain conclusions, you're going to start to think certain things, and it's going to make it sound like you're tr kind of prophesizing them. But I do want to uh, remind people that my goal is to teach and to be honest with you, I think that's overwhelmingly what is occurring uh, with my channel. I mean, I don't think that before my channel existed within the AMC community and Twitter uh, AMC community, I don't think that I would have been in a situation where I could have found a creator and been sharing literal Wyckoff memes with them um, and having a community of people just sharing Wyckoff accumulation or distribution on a bunch of different charts with me. So um, overall, I think that that's what I need to stick to. I need to remember that <laughs> that I'm actually doing a good job. Um, I need to remind myself of that. I need to remind myself that I'm doing a good job of educating the community um, in the way that I think is best for the community. And that's that's a way for them to learn for themselves and be able to make better decisions for themselves. So sorry about that rant at the beginning. Let's get into the chart. I know you guys are probably like, some of you guys are definitely waiting for this video like, shit, Dave, what do you think? <laughs> so let's get into it. All right. So as we've been talking about, um, I have believed that we are in a Wyckoff accumulation schematic um, or a reaccumulation. I mean, I've used both terms. Um, and I'll talk about a more specific reaccumulation schematic that we can base this move off of. And it's going to require combining a few elements, but I think you'll find it interesting nonetheless. So this is um, the accumulation schematic. So up until this point here, let's see, zoom in here. Up until this point here, we had been following this schematic and thinking that perhaps we had already been past phase C. Um, and in phase C, you have one of two things that can happen, right? So in schematic one, that's on this uh, this form here that I'm using on the right side of the screen, you can see that in phase C, you have an actual spring that breaks below the trading range in phase C um, as a test of the supply, or I mean the demand. Sorry, my cat is playing with my hand while I'm using my mouse, which is kind of weird. Leave me alone, Simba. 
Um, and then there's this alternative schematic, which is schematic two, uh, where you have a last point of support where you wouldn't actually break below that trading range. Um, based on this analysis, I had been thinking because we had swung down here and we had started creating higher lows that we had actually um, perhaps moved already through the phase C. And just to give you an example of what it looked like is like maybe this was the end of phase B. And then this was going into your phase. This was phase C and this was going into phase D, just for example. Um, but obviously, that didn't turn out to be the case after today. And now what I think is happening is it's possible that we are in a spring phase for this accumulation schematic. <laughs> now, obviously, there are a few things that we need to comb through. And we're going to have to take a really deep dive and look at what the volume is telling us uh, based on this in order to determine this. Because the spring phase is normally a low volume sell-off. Um, let's see. So we can actually read about the spring phase here. It says, note, springs or shakeouts usually occur late within a trading range and allow the stock's dominant players to make a definitive test of available supply before a markup campaign unfolds. A spring takes price below the low of the trading range and then reverses to close within the trading range. This action allows larger interests to mislead the public about the future trend direction and acquire additional shares at bargain prices. A terminal shakeout at the end of an accumulation trading range is like a spring on steroids. Shakeouts may also occur once a price advance has started. With rapid downward movement intended to induce retail traders and investors in long positions to sell their shares to large operators. However, springs and terminal shakeouts are not required elements. Accumulation schematic 1 depicts a, a spring, while accumulation schematic 2 shows a TR without a spring. See, this was actually what we were talking about. Um, and if you look at these details down here, uh, it says, the appearance of a sign of strength shortly after a spring or shakeout validates the analysis. As noted in Accumulation Schematic 2, however, the testing of supply can occur higher up in the trading range without a spring or shakeout. When this occurs, the identification of phase C can be challenging. So, you see how it says that it can be challenging? That That's basically the um, sort of assumption that we were under. Um, and, and I was saying that over the course of my past few videos. I, I know that I said it multiple times that uh, seeing phase C can be difficult if you don't ha have that spring phase where you break below the trading range. So now where do we stand? Um, so I drew up a couple different examples here, and I do want to shout out a page once we get to the reaccumulation schematic, but this would be the new interpretation of how we are looking at uh, this accumulation schematic, okay? So you can see here that you have your primary sell-off, when we came down from the 60s, then you have your sell climax. Usually this is a high volume event, so you have your high volume here for the sell climax. Then you have your automatic reaction, and then a sell test where you come back down and you test uh, the supply down below. Then you have another reaction here and a sell test in phase B. This one usually creates the bottom of the trading range. And then you have a phase B distribution. You can see that phase B distribution playing out here. And this was actually an extended phase B distribution that played out over the course of, well, from August all the way until pretty much now, which is November. So three months of a phase B distribution until you have our potential spring where we broke below the trading range that was established by cell test in phase B and cell climax. <laughs> so what we're looking for here the relative short term and i will say this that this spring it's possible it's possible that we see more downside here okay so because the spring phase is kind of intended to be this kind of last seller's effort in order to accumulate shares at a very low price we do have to uh, mention here that it's possible that we break below these levels but before we talk about what that looks like let's talk about why we wouldn't break below these levels okay so this $26.84 was essentially the bottom that we got uh, out of today. We bounced right back up. We went up a little bit in the after hours, and we'll talk about that too. Let's actually talk about that now. So we did um, have, our, have our phase here. We broke below the trading range. And I know that this volume candle looks really big, but in the grand scheme of things, it's actually not that large um, in, the, in the larger picture. We'll talk about that. Buyers dominating sellers in this trading range. Uh, we broke down here. 
we bounced right off of this $26.84, and then we kind of traded a little sideways. We got as high as, oh, wait, this is an FR, sorry. Yeah, we got as high as back into the trading range, which, now that I think about it, um, this actually is a good sign here because it says springs or shakeouts happen late in it, late in the trading range, and then reverses to close within the trading range. You could argue that going into after hours um, back into the trading range is a good sign. Um, we would have to look into more details on that. Obviously, the volume in after hours is very low. Or I get sidetracked again. This off. So this $26.84, if you look back on AMC's history, I'll go to the daily chart here. You need to scroll back. You can see that this has been a key level for the stock, um, historically speaking. If you scroll back here. So you see we found support here in April of 2016, June of 2016. Bounced off here. It eventually became a resistance zone here that we broke on our way up to the $70 rally. And then you can see here in 2014, it was originally a pretty good knockdown point here, a good zone of resistance once the, once the stock went public. We went above it. Really good sign of strength above this zone. Whenever you broke it, you kind of rallied upwards and then you distributed downwards. But you can see that there's a lot of price action in this zone here. Okay, So this is a key zone for AMC's uh, history. So it's definitely going to be something to look for. And as far as the volume goes, like I said, in the in the relative trading range, you know, this overall is a relatively low volume day for AMC, okay, over the course of the past few months. Now, in the more recent weeks, yes, it is the highest, it is the highest day since highest volume day since November 8th. But overall, in the larger accumulation schematic you see that the volume days have been dominated where most of the time the higher volume days have been dominated by, by green, which means bullish uh, divergence for volume. And then on the four-hour OBV that we've been watching, see here, this is on balance volume. You can see that the on balance volume, even after today, right, on the four-hour, is still in relative good terms. Now remember, I mean, I know for me personally, I don't think that the market, I don't think the market sell off um, is something that happens accidentally, right? I think that this plays into a lot of plans that are playing out within the stock market. So I think a lot of start stocks were affected by this, whether positive or negative, in a way that's playing into a larger uh, trading plan for institutions. I don't think that news comes on accident. Uh, for these stocks, I think that it's all part of a institutional plan. Um, but you can see here that the on-balance volume is still relatively high. I mean, uh, you can see here that you have lower highs occurring, right? But with OBV, on-balance volume, you still have these higher highs occurring. And, and it, even if you were to measure it from here, like you have... A much lower price here at this zone, this $125 million, I mean, 20, $125 million OBV zone, uh, the price is much lower than it was whenever it was in this zone before, um, but you still have that on-balance volume. Basically, what this means is, over the course of this time, the green candles have had more volume than the red candles have, uh, which insinuates that there's accumulation occurring, okay? Now, it's not a guarantee. It is a bit of a lagging indicator. Um, so you're not really going to see the effects of this until afterwards. For example, this will break out before there's a real breakout uh, in price. But this is uh, this is pretty good. I mean, this is a really good zone here. You can see that you, you have this sort of support zone here from August 26th. And back here, the price was actually $48. Now the price is down to $28. So this is a good sign, uh, in my opinion, that institutions are potentially accumulating the stock. Um, and have been causing this price action here so that they could continue to accumulate at lower levels. Now, let's talk about the reaccumulation schematic. Um, and I wanted to shout out square root of nine on Twitter, sorry. Because this, uh, sorry, not very smart guy. So this is square root of nine. 
on Twitter. Um, this guy's got the most aesthetic charts on Twitter. No shade to anybody else, but like this dude does not play around with his charts, okay? Um, and he has been talking about this reaccumulation after, if I can find it. Oh, he DM'd it, but I don't want to pull up our DMs on on the page. All right, let me go pull this up over here. Sorry about that. For privacy, privacy reasons. But he shared the schematic, and so I'll share his idea. Lots of DMs. I mean, I should just share. Page then. All right. Don't be a weirdo and try and read through this or something like that. Um, <laughs> so you see here that you have uh, reaccumulation after decline, okay? They have a buying climax, an automatic reaction, and a sell test. And then, and then you break down into this lower level here. Hopefully you guys can see this clearly. Yeah, so you break down into this lower level here. Sorry if you're blind now. You have an automatic reaction, a sell test down below. You, basically, you create a new trading range. Now, what we think is going on here is you have a reaccumulation after decline that's occurring with a spring action built into it, okay? So the spring would be the breakout, the break below the trading range, um, as we discussed before. And so I think that it's overall a pretty good, uh, you know, a pretty good thesis as well. I mean, you could say that it's the reaccumulation schematic. As we've discussed before, the volume is indicative uh, so far of accumulation and then as far as the creek goes i think that's good to draw like this straight line creek and basically what jump the creek means is whenever you have that sign of strength basically the confirmation of the sign of strength is when you have this break above your trading range well i mean break above this resistance zone and then you go into this sign of strength and you break uh, up and complete the move now as far as downside goes okay so this this is an interesting thing. Oh, by the way, I just had this like, this is a short term distribution played out here. I don't think that this is distribution because OBV doesn't really support the idea that this is distribution. Literally, the on balance volume is just as high right now as it was back when uh, the price was up at $60. I don't think that this is distribution with the intent to push the price into lower levels, like below the 20s. Um, I just don't I don't see it in this schematic. Um if you if you if you guys have a schematic or something, and I know that the schematics aren't necessarily the Bible, right? But if you if you have a schematic that you want to share with me, feel free to share it with me either in Discord or on Twitter. Um I would love to see your thesis on that. And then I would love to also see the volume analysis that would support the idea that this is distribution. Uh, I'm open to opposing ideas. I'm not opposed uh, to people sharing something with me that I disagree with, and I would I'm willing to have my mind changed, but I just don't think that that's the case here. Um. So, as far as the price levels, the lower price levels, what we need to look at is Fibonacci retracements. Okay, and since we broke the trading range, we have to use Fibonacci retracement from basically before this trading range and take a look at where we're gonna potentially find support. So if you measure from the move right before the move in June, right, the the big move up here in like late May, your 707 Fibonacci, shout out to Jen Collado on YouTube. Um, that's a level that he introduced to me. The 707 Fibonacci ratio, uh, we've we blasted right through that. Let's go on a shorter time frame. Any support there? Here. No. Um, we have found support here at this this golden pocket range, the 618 to the 65. Um, but we haven't pushed down to the 786 here, which is $25.08. So that's a possibility here. Us getting turned around here makes me think that maybe it's using a different Fibonacci level measured from a different space. Um, you can see that the 707 here is $27.60. This is a little bit closer to, to the type of move that you would see where you briefly break below and then you come back up. Measure back here. Same thing, right? Closer to that 707, the 2716. 
can try from here. Still 707, 2659. It's pretty close. And then the ultimate uh, move from the January to May accumulation here, you can see that this is actually the 65 um, Fibonacci level here that we're getting turned around at. We're just below it right now. Now we would have broken above it in extended hours, and we're sitting right in the golden pocket in extended hours. So that's pretty interesting. Um, especially because this would be the most significant Fibonacci retracement to measure because it represents the very bottom of the previous move to the very top and then back to the very, uh, well, it well it doesn't measure back to the very bottom. It just naturally gets those through the Fibonacci. We go back all the way to the bottom here in January, right, when the stock was around $2. Yeah, you can see that from here, it's also finding uh, finding support in its golden pocket. And it's actually sitting above the golden pocket. From So all of these ratios are, are relevant zones. And you can see that, right? I measured from here all the way to here. And you can see that these zones get heavily traded, right? You can see the price just bouncing in between uh, these Fibonacci zones here. Um, so clearly, there's some correlation there. Now, if you were to measure, I think that these last two were the best ones for sure. The 786 retracement from here would be $17.05. And then from the, the buy button sell off here in February, the 786 would be $19.72. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Oh no, below 20. Um, but I just have to I just have to point these zones out, okay? Because these are relevant zones. And also, previous to the January rally here well the january rally if you measure that fibonacci um you actually broke briefly below that 786 and then you came back up now i know a lot of people are going to say buy button was turned off it was um you know there's not a you know whatever it's not like a normal happening you have an 885 as well if you measure from right before the jump off point here when it was around two dollars and 73 cents three dollars so um, but these Fibonacci levels are key, man. Like they, they really do help. And just to show you, at least, I mean, maybe you could speculate that institutions use them as some sort of communicative tactic or, uh, or something like that. But you can see here that, oh, sorry, accidentally started an extension there. You can use this Fibonacci extension tool. I've, I've done this a million times in my videos now. You can measure from the bottom in January to the top here in January. Then back to the bottom in February. And the 3.618 Fibonacci level actually uh, predicted $73.87. So, I mean, even as anomalous as this event, the buy button being taken off uh, was, this tool would have still predicted that top. So I think that it's, uh, you should you should have the, the ability to use it as a retracement measurement tool. Um, and so, yeah, so from here, you know, what you're really looking for, and this is what, what creeps me out about, about what makes the downside possible. And so I'm, I'm going to be truthfully, like, blunt, way blunt, honest about this, okay? If you measure the all-time VPVR, right? Let me get the visible range. So basically what this tool is doing, okay, is instead of measuring volume based on the day, right, so you can see the volume spikes and everything like that, it measures volume based on the price, okay? So basically it's a, it's volume profile visible range is the tool. So just search visible range and you'll find it in TradingView if that's, uh, that's the tool that you want to use. I don't know what it would be called on Thinkorswim or anything like that. But... Now that we're in this zone, we have you can see here we have tested a very key point, okay? I mean, we are sitting right on top of what Esther Esther Nafil on Twitter is go follow him. Go follow where nine. Go follow at Rico's trade, even though good guy. All right. 
um, you it, Esther would call this an air pocket. Okay, <laughs> basically the way that the reason that he refers to it this way is because you can see here that this is clearly an anomaly as far as uh, volume in in the history of AMC. This is the area that has the least amount of volume. Does that make sense? And so the price is going to be drawn to areas like this, okay? And so we have to we have to face the reality here that and the reason is because there's liquidity, okay? Because this price hasn't developed this price range hasn't developed support, um it basically justifies, hey, let's go here, test these price ranges so that we can figure out if they are or, or if they are not supported by retail, right? That would be the uh, psychology behind it. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say the orders are being delayed or this, that, and the other, okay? We try to ignore those, uh, those circumstances for the purposes of technical analysis because I think that technical analysis is telling a certain story with AMC, okay? And so whether we like it or not, they're using the psychology surrounding these charts to get people to feel or think a certain way, okay? And so now that we're sitting on this zone, it is possible, okay? It is possible. I'm not necessarily saying it's my conviction because I do believe that we're in reaccumulation, okay? But I will say that it is possible that we come down here and we mess around in this zone, this 19 to... $28 zone. We've now broken into it. So it's completely possible to happen, okay? Um I mean, we we have to interface with reality, right? Um and I made a video today in my car and and I I kind of referred to this earlier in the video, but I made a video today in my car where I was sitting there talking to the camera and and I just was saying like, you know, the demonization, man, of people who are trying to put out TA and be honest, um and give that potential downside, you know, tell, try and tell their audience, hey, this is why I see there is potential downside. It doesn't change the way that I feel about the stock. Um, and I'm an investor, not a trader, but, you know, it's important that I have the ability to be honest um, here. And so I'm not saying that I think that this is the most likely. Let me be clear. And if I did think it was the most likely scenario, I would say it right now. But I don't think it's the most likely scenario. Now, is that me giving myself hopium or something like that? It's possible. Um, I won't deny that that's a possibility. But I think that overwhelmingly, this schematic, the price action that we've seen over the course of the past few months, is more indicative of a reaccumulation. Okay, this is the most likely scenario in my in my mind. Okay, this is what I believe is going to. Um, if I'm wrong. I'm wrong. As always. Uh. I'm I'm totally fine with that. It doesn't it doesn't bother me one bit. Let's look at the weekly OBV. I'm just curious. I never looked at it before. Holy smokes, dude. <laughs> Whoa, dude. This is actually pretty good. Um, let's see. So this was the highest. So this was the all time high OBV. When AMC ran to $77, this is where OBV was. And since then, I mean, it's literally even forming, it's almost forming support. Wow. Yeah, I mean, look. <laughs> Those of you who stuck until the end, this is pretty good. <laughs> um... I would say, man, this is, I don't know, this is a good, this is good. Let's look at the daily OBV. Curious. I mean, you can see here, I mean, overwhelmingly, man, like, the OBV on balance volume is in an uptrend. Let me just explain how this, this, uh, this indicator works just for those, I mean, obviously now we're down, right? Um... Basically, OBV, it takes, it adds or subtracts the volume based on if you have a, a green day or a red day. So if you have a green day and you have a million volume, then you would have a million OBV. 
And then if you have a red day with three hundred or two hundred fifty thousand volume, your total OBV would be then then seven hundred fifty thousand. Okay, does that make sense? So that's how this is calculated, and you can see that you know again overwhelmingly the volume is dominated by bulls. Okay, let's look at the two. Yep, still in an uptrend here. Right? This is a divergence, right? So you have... Now you have, officially, lower lows in price, but higher lows in OBV. And then we can also take a look at MFI, Jen Collado on YouTube. Make sure you go check him out. Go look at MFI. Wow, MFI is really high on the two day. What the hell? This is basically a money flow indicator. So uh, it's kind of like RSI, but it, it has more of a focus on money. I'm not entirely sure exactly how it measures, like what the what the um metric it uses is. You can see here that it's curling up a little bit. And then it, it does have this divergence in the four hour chart. Um and basically these divergency divergences is when it breaks below this this sort of range, it's an indication that uh, it's oversold and you should be seeing upside in the relative short term. Six hour, you have a divergence. Eight hour, you're still shooting down here. One hour, no divergence. Two hour, you had, had a divergence here, but it didn't, didn't bounce up. No indicator is perfect. Obviously, we have to use a bunch of different indicators and we have to look at price and and come to our own conclusions but uh yeah so yeah that's basically it guys this is the entire video <laughs> uh i covered just about everything everything that i have been looking for in the chart you've seen the good stuff you know my my bullish bias you've seen the bearish scenario that i'm giving um i'm not here to say that i'm predicting the future i'm giving different scenarios i'm showing how things can play out um, and even if that's unpopular from now on, it's my commitment to try my hardest to get the truth out there and not the truth necessarily, but like what I see, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's my commitment to you. So from now on, I'm not going to let the commenters try and like deviate me from my plan and, uh, and make me try and sound more bullish than maybe I am in the moment, um, or anything like that. I'm going to try and stick with the cold hard what I think is the truth, what I think is the most likely thing. Um, and as I said, my conviction is, and, and it's the same as it was yesterday or the day before, and I know that yesterday I said, or, well, the day before I said, I think we're coming towards a bottom here. Um, and look, man, we got smacked up the past few days, right? Um, but I haven't changed my mind. I still believe that we're coming towards a bottom. Um, that's my conviction. So even if the price sinks a little bit more, Early into today, I mean, into tomorrow. Sorry about that. Um, you know, that's still my conviction, man. I'm looking for that reversal. I do think that a reversal is coming. So um, hopefully you guys understand my position and what I'm trying to accomplish here. Uh, and I'm in this fight with you. Uh, we're, we're here together. So just uh, just know that. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to stop going on. You can follow me on Twitter, at David Marino Jr. Drop a like on the video if you liked it. It really helps me in the YouTube algorithm. And my Discord link is going to be down below. It's completely free to join. You can just join there. It's a cool community. We share a bunch of charts, talk a bunch of AMC, talk about cryptos, talk about other plays, and we share charts and Wyckoff analysis and Elliott Wave and all that stuff. So uh, shout out to everybody over there that's holding that community down. And uh, until next time, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around this whole time. Take it easy.